There has been a lot of new information about the partial apartment collapse in Davenport, Iowa that happened almost two weeks ago on May 28. I will bring you up to date. We now have a video of the collapse and many photos showing the very poor state of the brick wall that failed. The building is more than 100 years old. The collapse happened on the back wall facing the parking lot. The back faces of buildings get the cheap treatment in terms of aesthetic effort and less maintenance attention. On Sunday, May 28, at 4.53 p.m., the middle section of the six-story wall collapsed. It took down about 15 apartments into a mangled pile of rubble. In the Street View images, we can see the neglect goes back to 2008 and before. The other three facades were not degraded like this because they received good protection over the years from their better quality outer layer of face brick. Here we see a section of the building. Imagine it as a vertical slice through the structure so we can see inside. At the top is the roof and the bottom is the basement and the ground. All the external walls are load bearing. The internal structure is steel frame. The steel frame held up the floor slabs and the internal walls. After three days, the city made these documents available. They are inspections and notices addressed to the owner covering the last three years as well as structural notes. There were notices by the city to the owner to vacate, but they are rather ambiguous in whether they applied to the entire building or only individual apartments. I have prepared the best photos into this mosaic elevation view. The photos are flattened and placed in their locations on the facade. We will focus on the photos directly related to the failure. The yellow lines indicate where the wall was torn away from the portions that remain standing. The two circles are places where the bricks first began failing deep inside the wall. This can be seen in the collapse video. The first point of failure was a panel of plaster or veneer which fell off the wall 2 minutes and 43 seconds before the collapse. Here is an example of one of the inspection reports from three years earlier. The photos tell the story of neglect and a building that was screaming out its distress. This long crack would carry water deep inside the wall. For the primary structure to have been allowed to reach this sorry state while people lived inside was a blatant disregard for safety. The circle is where this failure of this wall was centered. This damage is also related to the collapse. The wall section shared along this vertical crack. This meant the crack was all the way through to the inside and a crack which residents reported in their complaints to the owner. The primary structure had been severely compromised. The brick opening had gone out of square. You can see the window could not close any longer. The right hand side of this wall had dropped relative to the left side. The residents reported sagging floors. As the bricks dropped, the steel floor beams dropped too, causing the floor to slope. The owner reportedly told residents the building had been checked out by an engineer and declared safe, and he dismissed their complaints. I find it incredulous that an engineer would have declared this safe, particularly as the structure was six stories high. This haphazard patch job seen here is disturbing. It points to maintenance on the primary structure being treated as an annoyance. The bare minimum was spent each time a repair was taken on instead of doing the job properly in one go. These repairs were at the part where the failure began. I suspect the core bricks inside the wall at this point would have looked very dodgy. In the week before the collapse, the repair work started and by the end of the week, the building had collapsed. Why did the supposed immediate repairs take so long? This is an example of shoring. A brick contractor who did not get the job quoted for the repair with the price including shoring. The city stipulated shoring was required, but the owner rejected these costs. The contractor told the owner he would not do the work without properly supporting the wall above because he would not put his workers at risk. But the owner rejected these costs. Needle beams go right through the wall and both ends of the beams are supported by robust supports. Shoring is typically done under the guidance of an engineer. The owner proceeded with another builder. The shoring they put up was just for show. These 2x4s would do nothing to support or secure the substantial load from 5 stories above. This cowboy approach led to the death of 3 of his tenants. Here, a day or two before the collapse, a panel of bulging outer brick veneer skin is seen laying up against the wall. 
The video clip of the collapse is almost nine minutes long. Nothing much happens in the beginning till the final three minutes. But when it is sped up and playing back and forth, we can see something was happening. Pay attention to the closest inclined pole. It starts to buckle, telling us the bricks were slowly dropping, but slower than the eye can see. From this, we can tell the bricks at the center point of the failure were incrementally pulverizing, slowly settling under the load. As one brick exceeds what it can carry, it cracks and turns to powder. Then the adjacent bricks take over the additional load till they also fail. This ongoing sequence continued and accelerated till the whole area grew too large and everything failed at once. This panel was the first visible and significant breakage, almost three minutes before. Then 56 seconds before the disaster, the bricks next to the door fell out. This shows the excessive loads were relocating to each weakest point. There were about six smaller puffs of dust showing more localized fracturing and breaking before total failure. The video cuts out midway through the collapse. It is not entirely certain why this happens, but the reason given is a power failure. The plaster panel is first to fall, then the lower bricks fall, and then some smaller chunks with dust. The outer ends of the steel beams were supported by the bricks. As the wall gave way, the steel beams dropped, taking the floor slabs and everything else with them. It was fortunate that the 100 plus year old steel columns held and prevented any further spread. The day after the collapse, the city issued an immediate demolition notice for the whole building. Residents of the building and from Davenport were outraged that the city could be so callous as to order the immediate demolition while people and animals could still be in the building. A day later, an elderly resident appeared in a window after hiding under her table and pets were recovered. After public protest and almost a week of ongoing confusion, the rubble was then searched properly. Not long after the search began, three residents who had been missing were found and confirmed to have died in the collapse. The city showed a disturbing lack of dignity to the family and residents. Newsmax got their stories very mixed up. This morning in Moscow, a city of 21 million people, there was a pre-dawn attack. Drones struck several buildings. Going to so in summary, this was a load-bearing brick failure brought on by long-term neglect and very shoddy repair work. The higher quality of bricks on the public sides of the building safeguarded those walls against disintegration of the core brick structure. The forgotten back wall was not so lucky. Treating it like an afterthought led to this tragedy. The red flags were many and plain to see. Engineers who were paid to look at the structure have a lot to answer for. This is the current owner, who showed a blatant disregard for safety and seemed to think paint could hold his building up. Already the lawsuits are piling up against him. The engineers and the city also face serious questions of liability. Old buildings can last a very long time, but they do demand additional care and proper maintenance. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.